In this video, we're going to talk about confidence intervals for the model parameters of a simple linear regression model. So once again, a reminder, the simple linear regression model is that yi equals beta naught plus beta 1 x sub i plus some model error, okay, for i equals 1 to n. Right, and right now we're working with the assumption that this model error is i, i, d, normal with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Right. And as I discussed in the previous video about hypothesis testing for parameters, we discussed that b1, right, which is the estimator of beta 1 of the slope, minus beta 1 divided by s over the square root of sxx, we discussed in the previous video that this is a t distribution, right? And that follows directly from the fact that the uh, model errors are normally distributed. So this is a t distribution with uh, degrees of freedom n minus 2. All right. And similarly, in the previous video, we discussed that b0 minus beta 0 divided by s 1 over square root of 1 over n plus x bar squared divided by s x x. This is also a t distribution with degrees of freedom n minus 2. Okay, so let's talk about how to use this knowledge that these are t distributions to construct a confidence interval for the model parameters beta 1 and beta naught. So let's start with beta 1. All right, so t distribution, it kind of looks like a normal distribution. Okay, and if we want to construct, say, uh, the, say we want to construct like a 95% confidence interval, right? Alpha, alpha is the uh, amount that's it's one minus whatever your confidence level is. Okay, so it's the amount that's left over for the tails. Right, so in this case, if it's 95%, alpha would be 0 0.05, right? So this would be the center area is 1 minus alpha, right? In this scenario, alpha is 0 0.05 and for a 95% confidence interval, right? And it left over in the tails, we would have uh, 0.025 and 0 0.025, which is basically saying that we're going to have alpha divided by 2 in each tail. Right? So this is a general buildup of how to construct a confidence interval. All right, uh, t distribution is centered on zero. So the t value that's here to the left and the t value that's here to the right, since it's symmetric, they're the same number, just one side's negative and the other side's positive. All right, let me scroll down. So we're going to call this negative t. Okay, and I'm going to do it in general, it's going to be negative t alpha divided by 2. So instead of uh, constructing this only for the 95%, I'm just going to use alpha as a general case. Okay, so let me go and delete all this 95%, uh, right? So we're going to talk about this in general for any significance level, okay? t alpha divided by 2, and then uh, the t distribution also, we always need to write its um, degrees of freedom. Right, and this one over to the right is going to be the posit same number, but positive t alpha divided by 2, n minus 2. Right? And both these numbers, these are you know, numbers that are based off of your confidence level, and you basically you would look them up in a table, or, or Excel will also calculate them for you, okay? depending on what your confidence level is. All right, and so now I can, I can say something about the probability that this guy is between these two t values, it's got to be this 1 minus alpha, right? So if it's 95%, then it would be uh, 0.95 that this term here is between these two t values, right? So let me go ahead and write that down. So the probability that b1 minus beta 1 divided by s over SXX is between negative T 
alpha divided by two, n minus two, and positive t, alpha divided by two, n minus two. The probability this guy is between these two t values equals this one minus alpha. All right, so whatever your significance level is. All right, one minus alpha is whatever your significance level is. So 0.95 for 95% confidence interval. All right, and now, now I can solve this. And what I want to do is, is get uh, beta in the middle, beta one in the middle of this. So go ahead and I guess first step, I might multiply both sides by this denominator here, right? And I'll end up with the probability. So let's go ahead, we have s over the square root of sxx negative times t alpha divided by two, okay? And we have one minus beta one. And then we have once again that s divided by the square root of sxx times t alpha divided by two n minus two. Okay, this equals one minus alpha. Okay, so now if I want to solve for beta one, I end up with, okay, um, one minus s over the square root of sxx, t alpha divided by two, n minus two. Okay, b one plus s over the square root of sxx, t alpha divided by two, n minus two, equals one minus alpha. All right, and so now I'm starting to see my confidence interval. So we can see our confidence interval is now this guy and this guy. All right, and a lot of times, uh, this second term here, you're noticing it's the same on both sides of our equation, right? It's the same. So a lot of times that's called the margin of error, right? So my margin of error, or ME, for this confidence interval is S over SXX, T alpha divided by two, N minus two. All right, so now my confidence interval for uh, the slope is B1 plus or minus my margin of error. All right. And I'll show you in a minute how Excel will calculate this for you. All right. Uh, before I move on to that, though, I do want to mention the exact same type of math that I just did here, because B not or uh, our estimate of the intercept, it also follows the t distribution. Uh, we have same type of duration, and we end up with our confidence interval for beta naught is B naught plus or minus S times the square root of one over N plus X bar squared over SXX times T alpha divided by two N minus two. All right, so this is our confidence interval. And we use the exact same method to uh, arrive at this conclusion. Where this is this is our confidence interval for the uh, intercept. All right, so let me go to Excel and show how we can uh, calculate this in Excel. And actually, Excel calculates it for us very nicely. So here's our uh, data, our example that we've been using, and I'll provide the link to this data in the description of this video. Um, but go ahead and once you have your data, go to data and then data analysis. Uh, scroll to regression, press OK. And for Y input, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to predict uh, life expectancy given someone's income um, in all these different countries in 2010. So I have this data from 2010. So I'm going to, uh, my Y is my life expectancy. So I'm going to click on my label and then I press Control, Shift, and then the down arrow to highlight all my data. Okay, move the cursor to the X. All right, scroll all the way back up. Click on the first cell, so it looks like I'm at the first cell, then press Shift, Control, Down Arrow to highlight all my data. 
Press labels because I highlighted the data, or I highlighted the labels when I uh, highlighted the data. And then we see this confidence level. Let's start with the 95% confidence level, okay? Uh, new workbook, it's gonna go ahead and make a new sheet and put, put the analysis there. So yeah, this is everything I need for right now. So let me just press okay to it. Okay, so you see it created a new sheet, sheet one. All right, and if I click this and then double click one of these guys, it'll automatically uh, set the width so I can see my tables clearly. All right, and here we go. Here is our confidence intervals. So it actually it just goes ahead and it calculates it for us, okay? So our confidence intervals, we, you know, we came up with the formulas to calculate them ourselves, but it looks like Excel will, will go ahead and do it for us, which is really nice. Um, if I scroll over, you see it appears to be listing it twice. Um, the 95% confidence interval is always going to be provided for you. So this is the 95% confidence interval for the intercept, and this is the 95% confidence interval for the slope. Okay, because income per person, that's my variable, right? So that's the slope for that uh, regressor variable. Okay, now if I were to change this, let's press data analysis, press regression, okay. Uh, let me go back. Actually, let me press cancel because I think I need to be in the data sheet when I'm doing this. Okay, so press data analysis, then press regression, okay. And then uh, I think everything should still be highlighted, so it's all good, it's all the same. Uh, but now let me change this instead of being 95, say I wanted the 90% confidence interval. Uh, go ahead and create a new worksheet, that's fine, press OK. And it'll do a, another work, new worksheet. Okay, so see, now I have sheet 1 and sheet 2. And if I highlight this, double click, automatically adjust the width. Alright, and if I look down here, notice... The 95% confidence interval is still being provided, right? And that's the same confidence interval that's provided here. They should be exactly the same. But what's changed is since I asked it to calculate the 90% confidence interval, it's done that as well. So whatever requested confidence interval you want, it'll provide that as the second confidence interval, but you'll always get the 95% confidence interval as a default. Okay. All right. So looking at that interval, we can say we can make conclusions like we're 90% confident that the intercept for this model is between 64.7 and and 60, 67 looks like, right? So we can say we can make conclusions based off of these confidence intervals about how confident we are that the model parameters are within these intervals that they've provided.